so you know those days when you're not necessarily in a very good mood well I decided this year um, <laughs> I'm going to attempt the Christmas spirit and I got one of these stupid hats so my plan or thought is if I'm wearing this around especially in public how can I be upset about things <laughs> anyways right now I I have no idea where this is going to land in the video. I've been filming stuff over the last few days, but we are going to drive a couple of towns over and pick up sort of a bedside adjustable height table thing because, well, it's cluttered in here. I hate turning the camera around because it looks bad, but um, yeah, there's like a bunch of stuff everywhere and the desk is not exactly clean and I've been doing all my editing on a laptop. So, I need another table that's not that desk. So, for $40, there's this little wheeled abomination we're going to go look at. Supposedly, it needs the screws tightened or something. I don't know. Furniture isn't really something that's hard to fix if it is actually broken. But, um, yeah. Let's hop in the van. And, uh, well, for those that may not know, apparently it's been raining a lot in the northwest, northwest like, Portlandish area. We've been getting an average of one and a half to two inches of rain every 24 hours for the last few days. I love this little, this hat, this is great. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a little bit wet and since half the people driving around here are not from around here, they don't know what rain is and they freak out and crash their cars. So I'm anticipating lots of traffic. Mm, I just realized I don't have the camera mount installed in the new van yet. Well, anyways, we're gonna go hit an ATM then buy some stuff. Oh, I've got cameras on the chair. I always forget about that. Okay, anyways, um, I'll be back in a few when I'm closer to the place that has the thing. So we're in a very posh part of uh, town here in the metro area known as Laco, or rather the people that live here subscribe to that convention. Um, but yeah, anyways, we're, uh, for, man, I still haven't fixed that rattle yet. We're really close to where we're going. Hopefully this table works. All right, just pulled up at this place. Looks like they are five minutes out. So I will chill here like a creeper in the back of the van wearing a Santa hat until they arrive. a table. Future me, adjust this in post so you can see it. That'll do nicely. And now we get to wait in line for the bridge. I'm gonna stop by the uh, the mail center while we're out running around. Uh, let's see, it's like 5 p.m. on a Wednesday, so peak rush hour. The bridge is like way over there in the distance, but yeah, we get to sit here for a little while. Should have gotten a fish fillet. It's a prime time to be eating wild caught Alaskan halibut. Mmm, flaky. Okay, I think we made it back. Um, that was that was about 83 miles we drove to get this table. It's uh, about 6:30 p.m. Probably about time I start editing this video. Um, table's in the back, it's pretty light, so I'm gonna unload, get into the bus, and then uh, start dumping footage from various cameras. Here we have table thing. It's sitting here on top of the pellet stove. It was narrow enough that I could just put it on my lap and carry it in here. They said something about screws needing to be tightened, 
but I'm noticing the wheels are kind of tilted that way as opposed to the desk. And then also something's going on here. Oh, by the way, I'll probably be covering this in a later video, but um, this here is a high, low, and medium speed CAN cable for OD OBD2 that's made for uh, four uh, scan. It's an open source thing. Really excited about that. But um, this thing came with a cup holder and some weird little wedge. Uh, ooh, the cup holder has drain holes in it. I'm not sure what's going on with this thing. I'm gonna get this thing tightened up and then set it up in here, get the laptop on there. By the way, the hat is working. I'm in an unexplainable good mood. I don't know why. I even yelled at some people inside of McDonald's wearing this. <laughs> I think they were confused. Anyways, I'll be back in a minute or three or whenever. Ah, I see what's happening here. These screws are stripped out. They, uh, they kind of thread in there, but then they don't. Yeah, see? That's uh, not how that's supposed to work. The threads don't, I mean, the threads are a little bit boogered up, but not too bad. And these two screws have different thread pitches, but neither one really goes in there. Actually, that one kind of does. Eh, not really. I'm gonna look through my box of hardware and um, see what I've got. Regardless, it doesn't really matter because gravity is just sitting on this and that just kind of a locating pin for now. And I think there's supposed to be a nut here on the bottom too, but uh, yeah, I uh, I found my taps and stuff, but I decided, well, I found some metric bolts here that were basically the same size, but metric equivalent. So I'm just cross threading them in here. Uh, like I always say, a cross thread is a strong thread. So we'll get these kind of snug, there we go. And then I'm gonna put a nut here on the bottom and that should hold it together for now. I think the easy way to fix this is gonna be drilling holes all the way through and then running some bolts over to the other side. Um, we'll deal with that later, but yeah, I think this'll work. Sweet. Yeah, pardon the pellet stove noise and the darkness in here. But as you can see, we have a desk over here now. Actually, can you see? Well, yeah. yeah. I, I haven't gotten the, um, where are they at? Oh, the, bin, the new bins are back there. As soon as I get done editing this video, I'm going to get to work on getting all this stuff organized. And that's gonna get rid of all this stuff that's on the floor here. Then we should be good. This thing has locking wheels that, the feet are kind of narrow and they hit my foot plates. So I think what I might do is bend these at a slightly wider angle. But having a nice adjustable desk here is, uh, pretty handy and it allows me to oh by the way I clean this desk a little bit see like all nice and organized sort of as long as I don't pan the camera too far that way no okay <laughs> anyways this is working well before I was having to use my lap desk and that was a pain because the laptop has to be plugged in when I'm editing and anytime I had to move or go grab something I had to like set down the lap desk and unplug everything and whatnot so anyways it's uh, it's a table and it works and it was 40 bucks. And I couldn't be happier. <laughs> okay, before we do too much else here, I need to get mail time out of the way because, well, there's a medium sized box that showed up and um, there Well, it doesn't weigh very much. It's kind of large and taking up a lot of space in here. So let's see what we got. There's like owls hooting outside. Weird. Oh, there's a box inside this box. <laughs> Why would I assume they'd be any different? We'll just, uh, 
that wasn't the best idea. I just realized there's 15 mile an hour winds outside. Hang on a second. Ring motion detected. Ahoy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, we should we should totally go look at that. Okay, cool. I'll send you the number. Bye. Okay. It appears as though we have what looks like a box that says Sterilite on it. I'm assuming this is from the gift list. And the fact that it says Sterilite is cool because I need more bins for the upper, like, uh, luggage, uh, whatever, these shelves up here. The ones I've been using are a specific size that fit in there perfectly. So I think this should be that. Ah, oh, yes, it is. Excellent. So we have an undisclosed number of these here bins. They're the, uh, clear plasticky ones with lids and little latchy handles. Awesome. That's gonna be great because I've been trying to go through here and get everything organized a bit more. And I've got a few bins that are mismatched and OCD dictates they all need to be the same. Actually, does this say 18 quart? Oh, it's six of them, sweet. Let me pull up the gift list here and see who bought this. Oh, it's from Ryan. Thank you, man. It says, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. And there's a giraffe emoji. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Yeah, this is gonna be great because, like I said, the OCD thing is kind of a thing and I'm I'm going through here and making sure we're in the mode to where I can move the bus if I need to without too much work. And a lot of these bins and stuff I have up here are not the same and these ones are perfect. So, awesome, thank you. For reference, here's what they look like. Oh, I guess they'd have opaque lids now. They used to be clear, but, but yeah, that's great. These things slide right in there. Well, here we are in the old power strip van, chilling by a waterfall for some reason. But what I've noticed is as I'm driving this thing around, sometimes the fuel gauge will just kind of slowly stop working. And I was like, oh, maybe the sender's bad or something like that. But then as I was driving around, I noticed that the chime would just start chiming for no apparent reason. And I was like, ah, I know what that is. It's the ignition switch. As I was sitting in a drive-thru, because, you know, I have to get coffee and I only eat terrible things, obviously. I was sitting in the drive-thru and it was running a little bit weird. So I just very gently turned the key forward a little bit and the idle cleared right up. The other interesting note is look how little I have to turn this before the engine shuts off. Oh, there's our chiming again. So there we go. It cuts out before we even get to that next detent. So this thing having, how many miles are on this? Uh, Yep, we went into potato mode. Come on. Stop being potato. There we go. 219,000 miles. I know that these ignition switches go bad. So, anyways. I called Ford and they wanted like... Um, they wanted like 49 bucks for one. So, not that bad. They didn't have it in stock, but a parts store has one for $28. So, seeing as how there's not a huge price differential, I'll have to go ahead and get the one that's on the shelf over at the... Uh, uh, that one zone that sells auto parts or something. But anyways, pretty easy to install. I'm out doing some running around right now, so we'll just grab that. And then I think we're gonna end up at the warehouse and then we'll install it or something. But yeah, nice, easy fix. Oh yeah, there's our, there's our random chiming again. If you, if you play with the, let's see if it starts again here. If you play with the key just a tiny bit, it'll usually quit. There we go. And we're also getting, you know, the airbag and the startup relays and everything going on. So, yeah, that thing needs to be replaced. Okay, it's a little bit of a zoo out here right now, but I think we should be able to maybe replace this thing. Oh, one of the screws is hard to get to. I'm going to have to remove this cover. Let's see if we can at least get the connector out of here. These things are pretty notorious for breaking as well. We've got the batteries disconnected, so it should make things a little better in theory. Oh wait, am I? Was that just the easiest connector removal in the history of forever? Hang on, let's see if this thing's burned at all. No, it looks fine. What the heck? Um, okay. 
Well, regardless, internally the switches get screwed up. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on here. Um, hmm. We might have to tweak some of those tabs a little bit so they get a slightly better connection, but let's see if we can get these screws out of here. There's two of them, and one is hidden up here under this plastic. So it might be a little tricky to get to. Oh, that wasn't even very tight. Almost like someone has been in here before. So there's one screw. Hand controls are kind of in the way, but since the other one was so loose, maybe this will pop out. No way. Okay. Easiest ignition switch removal ever. Let's see how this thing feels. Yeah, it seems a little bit crunchy. Let's look at our mechanism up in here if we can. Yeah, the, um, the little mechanism that attach or interfaces with this pin seems to be good. As far as getting the other screw in there, I'm not sure. Let's at least get one of these in. And we have some new screws. And then we're gonna take apart that old switch as well and see if we can, well, I'll see what there is to see inside there. Can't really see anything. There's part of the mechanism up underneath here that prevents me from getting my fingers right on the edge. Uh, I'm gonna go grab a Phillips real quick and we're gonna take this cover down. All right, let's see if we can pop this cover loose here. Give ourselves a little bit more room. This cover is somewhat obnoxious to reinstall sometimes, but yeah, whatever. Had this thing off of here when I was replacing the steering wheel and the clock spring last week. Have to unscrew our tilt lever here. And then, we don't need a lot of clearance, just, just enough to see. Ah, there we go. There you can see right there is our screw. I'm just using a little bit here with a piece of paper in a quarter inch socket to hold it in there. Because I couldn't find my actual quarter drive star bits. They're inside the warehouse here somewhere, but who knows where. All right, nice and tight. Yeah, so the rest of this wiring here is still left over from that car alarm. And I haven't I haven't gone through and um, uh, removed it yet, but will eventually. I'm gonna grab a little tiny flat blade and we're gonna modify these spade connectors here a little bit because that thing pulled off way too easy. It should have a lot more resistance, or a lot more resistance in the sense to it's difficult to remove, but that leads to less electrical resistance, if that makes any sense. So we're just gonna go in here and tweak all these just a tiny bit to uh, give us better contact on all these spade connectors. All right, I think that should do the trick. I think all we have left to do is plug this in. It just started raining, perfect. All right, it's plugged in. Rain's getting heavier and heavier. Let's give this a try real quick. Oh yeah, it's uh, this is significantly more solid now. When I do this, if I did that before, the thing would turn off. So yeah, I think we're doing good. Oh yeah, that is a fix. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the camera real quick because it is starting to rain and I need to get these screws back in here. And then we'll go back inside the warehouse and see what's going on. I've been working on cleaning up stuff in here a bit and trying to organize. And uh, well, yeah, I think I might be getting another dumpster. We, this is all low density packing over here and there are a few chairs scattered throughout. I need to start getting rid of stuff and uh, kind of streamline a bit. But anyways, let's, uh, let's take a look at this switch and see if we can figure out what was going on inside of it. All right, let's uh, see if we can pop this thing apart. 
I don't think there's gonna be, oh, it's riveted together. I was gonna say, I don't think there'll be any like huge, massive, obvious things other than a little bit of wear, but yeah, I don't have a drill here to take this apart, I don't think. Um, let me look around. Okay, I managed to find this little thing. It's an Oster brand, like, sort of battery-powered Dremel, and a 1 8 inch drill bit happened to fit right in it. So, let's see if we can do something with this, maybe. Okay, yeah, this thing does not really have much power, although, we are making progress. Oh wait, I might be an idiot. I think we can just chop these off. Yeah, hang on, this is destructive. Actually, that drilling worked. Whoa, we got the, okay, hang on. Okay, there we go. We have gained access. So usually what happens with these is the detents start to wear out and then the contacts kind of do the same. So the contacts here actually don't look too bad, really. I mean, we do have a little bit of crud here just from the lubrication goo, but that copper actually looks fine. And then over here on the contact side, Oh uh, yeah, so enough of this goo is in here that it's probably keeping it from connecting properly. Realistically, this thing was still working. The problem was the spring and the detents weren't lining up the way they should. So not surprising that our contacts don't look really too bad. See right here how this mark only is about the width of this pick? This needs to be a lot further up to get the proper contact. Same with here, that one goes a little bit further. The one on this side had good amounts of engagement, but after time, you can see right here that that's not really contacting how it should. So, anyways. Um, yeah, it's a thing. Oh, well, cool. Uh, I'm gonna box all this up and throw it away. Actually, I'll probably keep these springs because these are handy for other projects. But I think we're gonna file this in the round filing cabinet, which suspiciously looks like a paper bag over there, but. Anyways, cool. I think we got it fixed. We'll know for sure when we drive back, but um, yeah, excellent. I'm still here at the warehouse working away. I decided to get a bunch more of the ICS light shades ready to go. Cause right now what I've been doing just, I don't know, it, like I said, it's like an hour to 90 minute drive to get out here. So I typically, when I get a couple of orders, I'll come out here and make them and ship them out. But I figure if I get them ready in advance, then that will streamline the process a bit. So I was just going through here and I just made up a, another sheet of what's four times five, some amount. And then basically I have to go through and weed all that material out. Then we'll end up with these, which are ready to be packaged. And also while I'm here, I've been working on the, uh, the Invacare Mark VI electronics programming cards. For these, what I do is I search around on eBay to find you know old 256 megabyte cards somewhere between 128 and 512 typically. Then I just buy a whole bunch of them. I've got a bunch of these little cases and I made up some labels to put on each one because there's two different versions. But I just got another shipment of SD cards right here. So I'm going to be going through and actually this is the inbox here. So I'm gonna be going through and testing all of these. And with the Mark VI stuff, it's kind of hard to tell which cards are gonna be compatible. So I bought a bunch of them, then they seemed to work. So I went back through and bought all the rest of them that they had. So I think, I think this should last me for a while. Now they claim that all these work, but I go through each one, plug it into the computer, make sure, the, make sure it's formatted per appropriately, make sure it can copy and read files. And then some of them are broken. I think there's, Oh, there's one of them here. Oh, where's my reject pile? Oh yeah, this one here. So some of them, the plastic case gets broken. You can see right there that, well, yeah, it just kind of comes apart. So I go through and make sure they're all ready to go, copy the software on, and then throw them up on the website. Well, actually, they're already on the website, whatever. It's a lot of doing of stuff. Just basically get them ready to go. Again, they are used cards, but 
These things are starting to get hard to find, so I'm trying to stockpile as many as possible because there's still quite a few chairs out there that use those for programming. And then of course we have the test bench set up over here. I've got a Mark VI joystick there on the end. Every single one of them gets plugged into that controller. I copy the software over, verify that it works and that the controller can read and write. Then put on the labels and put them in the little containers and they're ready to go. I need to go through and I think you can see, uh, you can see the cut outlines here. So I need to go through and I use these really fine point tweezers to weed out all of the vinyl so we end up with a finished product. More rambling. I'm going to get some dinner, I think, and then we'll continue on with whatever's happening here. Okay, so there's one thing I need to do, and that is check the roof of the bus. There's a small leak up near the front hatch when it rains really hard, and, well, obviously I can't get up there myself. So I've devised a method to um, inspect this. All right, so let's take a little stroll here. As you can see, we have the roof, and uh, there's the rear hatch. Those hinges look a little bit weird. I don't know if those are the factory ones. Ah, it's really windy out here. Can't tell if those are the factory ones or not, but whatever. Everything in the back seems fine, so let's move forward a little bit more here. Looks like we've got some solar panels. All right, we've got our connection point there for the solar panels. That looks fine. Here's the front hatch. Looks like some of the paint's coming off and this bus used to be red. Also looks like someone went at it with a hammer at some point. Oh yeah, here we go. So right here, this, uh, this antenna looking thing is right where the leak is in the front. And it looks like there's a bunch of goo or glue or something going on there. Yeah, then we've got this antenna over here as well that looks like it's kind of crunchy. And what the heck is that blob on the bottom of the screen there? Uh, can this thing zoom in? Mmm, digital zoom. Eh, I'll just do that in post when I'm editing. But yeah, as you can see here, we've got uh, kind of a river or a dam of some sort of sealant on there that looks kind of nasty. Not quite sure what anyone was thinking, but you know, what is anyone thinking about anything? Because yeah, that'll, that'll totally fill up with water as it rains and then start leaking in there. Huh. Yeah, and there you can see around the antenna as well. Okay, well, at least now we know. The hatch itself isn't leaking, but right there in the middle is exactly where I was having issues. Can't really do anything about it, but uh, at least we know what we're up against now. <laughs> that's, uh, that's some mighty fine uh, application of goo, if you ask me. All of our solar panel mounting here seems to be fine though. You can see there's a little bit of a crown to those just to keep water from pooling up on them. We use that unistrut rail to attach everything. It looks like this part of the bus was yellow. Interesting. Yeah, everything up here seems to be looking good. All right, excellent. <laughs> 